For my crinoline I got two rolls of 25 meters, 11 millimeters um, flat steel boning. I personally think that this is the best type of boning to use to build a crinoline because it's very strong, it's pretty wide and it just gives a really good shape. I will link where I bought this boning in the description down below. I bought it from a Dutch online store, but I do believe they ship worldwide. I do also know that it's pretty expensive to ship to places like the US or Australia. So if you're from any of those places, I recommend looking for websites of your own. Because I don't know where you can get boating there, I just know from being based in Europe. <laughs> And for the channels where the boning goes into, I am going to use this very cheap synthetic fabric. I'm not sure what this is called. In Dutch it has several names. It's called Texture or Burlington or something like Terlenka or something. It's a very very cheap synthetic fabric and I actually really dislike working with this. But this is something I've left over and for building a crinoline it's mostly the boning that does all of the work with creating the shape. So I don't think I need a really good quality fabric in order to give the crinoline the shape it needs to have. So I will be using this. You can also buy just the um, casing that the boning goes into online. But that would have made it really expensive for me and I had this at home and I really just want to use this to be rid of it. So I will be using this but if you build a crinoline for yourself and you want to save time I do recommend getting like the casing for the boning because I'm gonna have to cut and sew all of this into strips and that will take a lot of time whereas the casing is already done just to slide the boning into so that will save a lot of time but like I said I just want to get rid of this stupid synthetic fabric and for the vertical strips of the crinoline I think I'm going to get some twill tape but I don't have that at my home right now so I'm going to go to the store tomorrow to see if I can get any. I don't know exactly how much I need of it right now either so when I built the crinoline with the, the horizontal hoops I might be able to calculate how much of the vertical strips I need anyway. So I will get those tomorrow and I think for doing the vertical strips that something strong like twill tape is very good to use. And I should also mention that I am not using a pattern for this. I know that Truly Victorian has some really good patterns for hoop skirts but I want the bottom hoop to be bigger. The Truly Victorian one has a bottom hoop of I believe 3 meters and 10 centimeters or something but I want to make really big princess ball gowns for this so I want a bottom hoop of at least 4 meters but maybe even 420, 430, something like that. I looked at a lot of reference images on Pinterest and I don't think round cage crinolines are very hard to pattern yourself so I'm just gonna go with it and see how it turns out. Maybe this is going to be a great disaster and we will see later how it goes. But yeah, I'm just gonna kind of YOLO this crinoline. I started off by cutting the boning for the bottom hoop because I wasn't sure how big I wanted to make it yet. I ended up going for four and a half meters in circumference. Once I had my bottom hoop I made a temporary waistband out of some ribbon and cut the nine vertical tapes. I pinned these tapes to my dress form in the places where it felt best to put them. Once those were in place I made my top hoop which is one and a half meters in circumference. I should also mention that the math for my crinoline as well as how much boning and fabric I needed will be in the description of this video.
So this is what I've got right now. It's obviously a bit out of balance, but I first want to add all of the hoops to the ribbons before I actually do all of the placement correctly. But I'm really liking the shape that it's starting to take and I absolutely love how enormous this crinoline is going to be. So I'm so excited to eventually have it all put together. I just did the math for the crinoline and I'm going to add uh, 25 centimeters between the length or width, whatever you want to call it, of every horizontal hoop. So it goes from 150 at the top to 450 at the bottom and there are going to be um, 13 hoops. I am also not going to add a back to the bottom just because it's going to be so incredibly wide that there is just not going to be a chance of me stepping into the bottom hoop. So I don't think it really needs that. So yeah, I'm gonna continue adding all of the hoops to the bottom and then I will be back. I finally finished evening everything out and I think it looks so incredibly nice right now. Obviously everything is still pinned to it using my wonder clips and my mom's laundry clips. But I'm very happy with the shape it has right now. Now I'm just gonna measure how much twill tape I have to get to make the vertical strips tomorrow because these are still very bad quality ribbon. This is not strong enough for the actual crinoline. And then I'm going to use the fabric I was talking about earlier to start making all of the boning channels for the horizontal hoops. What I think I'm going to do is make two individual strips of uh, bone casing for every hoop. So it's 13 hoops, so it will be 26 strips and sew them together so I get the casing that you can also just buy. Again, just buying it would save loads of time, but like I said before, I just really want to be rid of some leftover fabric. Remember when I said I would use the white fabric? I realized I didn't have nearly enough to make the really long channels. So I'm using the same fabric but in pink. This one is also from my fabric stash and I have 6 meters of it. So that should definitely be enough to cut the really long channels for the bottom of the crinoline. I marked the width of the channels on the fabric and started cutting the long strips. I used the 1.8cm bias tape maker for this project. So my strips are 3.6cm wide. The length of the channels are the length of the boning, plus about 5cm added to finish the back. And since you need a front and back channel, I cut twice the amount of strips. Once my channels were all cut out and finished on my serger, I started pressing them. This took me literally all evening to do and this fabric didn't want to stay in shape when I pressed it at all. If you're going to make your own crinoline, I highly recommend using a cotton or other easy to press fabric because this was an absolutely awful experience.
stitched my channels together by lining up the wrong sides of the fabric and stitching them along the sides. This took a couple hours to do. I also didn't pin them and just kept the sides together by hand because pinning them would have taken even longer and I really didn't care about making this crinoline look pretty as it will be covered up by skirts anyway and just needs to be functional and I highly dislike building crinolines in general so I kind of just wanted to get this over with. I made a quick waistband and placed all of the vertical twill tapes at the right places inside of the waistband. I stitched it together on my sewing machine and went over the waistband stitching twice for extra strength. This waistband definitely isn't the prettiest, but nobody will see it anyway, so I didn't really care. I also added a button to close it. Usually I use skirt hooks and bars, but I didn't have any of those left, so a button it is. Then it was time for me to place all of the channels onto the tapes. I will explain the math of how I did this in the description because I think I can do a better job explaining it when I'm writing it down instead of talking. Once everything was pinned in place, it was time to start stitching it down. When the whole crinoline was stitched together, it looked very deflated, which was kind of funny to see. I started adding the boning and I could slowly start seeing the shape it would take. Thank you. 
Okay, so I don't know what exactly happened from the test version I made of the hoop skirt until this version. But for some reason it's way shorter than it was when I did the first test of it. If you look at it from a down angle, I wanted it to be 25 centimeters off the ground and now it's suddenly 35 centimeters off the ground. As I measured the 6.6 .6 centimeters that had to be between these from the top and I actually think that last time I measured them from the bottom and every uh, hoop is about a centimeter wide so if that's a centimeter over all of these that's I think the 10 centimeters that it's too short now which is very stupid but I'm going to fix my problem so if you are going to make one of these for yourself measure from the same place every time so you don't have this problem because otherwise it would have been done now and now I need to do a lot of tedious fixing to get it right. And I also think that now that it's shorter it has more of a triangle shape while uh, as you can see it goes more like this and I wanted it to go more like this so what I think I'm going to do to fix that is cut the ribbons apart in two places and add just a bit more length in between. That will be a bit annoying to do but it's the only thing I can think of to fix this and I still have some twill tape left so that should be doable. I just cut all of the extra twill tapes that I'm going to put in between the tapes that are already on my crinoline. They are four centimeters wide and uh, I'm going to do two extra spaces. So I marked where I'm gonna cut them. Right here, down where the fourth hoop is. And then right here at the bottom, above the fourth bottom hoop. So I really, really hope that that will go all right. Because otherwise I'm just going to completely ruin all of the work that I did the past days. So pray for me that it will go well. Adding the extra strips ended up working. I just stitched back and forth over the same spot a lot of times for extra strength.